Upgrade preparation is a two-part step. In Part A, we need to check the compatibility of various UIM components, the upgrade path, and create a sizing plan. Then in Part B, we identify a backup and recovery plan. Once we've evaluated the existing environment, we'll start to plan the upgrade. We first want to refer to the compatibility guide. The guide provides a compatibility matrix to help identify the components that are compatible with different versions of UIM. We also want to be sure to reference the component support section of the guide to help identify the new components that are supported and components that are no longer supported. The upgrade paths section is another area that we want to pay close attention to. This section highlights the specific migration paths that are supported for each of the UIM components. Some versions require upgrading to a previous version before upgrading to the most current version, so we'll pay close attention to these upgrade paths. You can download the latest version of the compatibility guide from the CA support site at support.ca.com. Then we need to identify factors affecting the capacity of each of the UIM components and size the resources to be allocated. So what components do we size for capacity analysis? Well, to plan capacity, we need to think about the size of the various UIM components. Let me start with the hubs. The capacity of the UIM hubs depends on the way they're going to be deployed. Therefore, we'll need to decide whether to deploy the hub as a standalone system or install it in a multi-tiered environment. Further, there are multiple factors that need to be considered while planning the hub deployment. They are the number of devices, scalability, the number of metrics and alarms that robots report, any specific probe requirements, and oh, the geographic locations, including DMZ tunneling requirements. As you know, the UIM database stores device inventory, alarms, and QoS data. So do we need to perform capacity planning for the UIM database as well? Absolutely. The UIM database does store a lot of statistics-based inputs. So we'll use the database disk space calculators to size the UIM database. We use our sizing calculator as part of the health check to estimate the total metric load. This will help estimate the number of metrics that hubs, probes, and the database might handle based on your environment. From the health check, we make recommendations and provide the future state sizing criteria and deliver a roadmap to that future state. And again, we're here if you need any help with capacity planning and sizing your environment. Give us a call or contact your CA support representative to begin the upgrade discussion. We're now ready to move to Part B and complete a few activities before starting the actual upgrade. The very first thing we need are the user accounts required for the UIM install and upgrade process. An example would be that you'll definitely need the UIM administrator and the UIM database accounts. The next thing we'll do is make a note of any custom configurations made to the hub to be sure that we can restore to the previous version in case of any unexpected issues. It's been proven that a server snapshot is the best recovery plan, so we'll do that along with making a copy of the key directories. For example, directories for any integrated products and the UIM infrastructure servers and their directories. After we've upgraded your hubs, this information will help us set up your UIM environment again and will be part of the post-upgrade configuration step. We'll also note any custom scripts that were deployed. Okay, so now we've noted all the customizations in your environment. Are we ready to start the upgrade? Well, not just yet. We have one last but very important step, and it's around backing up the relevant systems. Previously, we took server snapshots as part of a recovery plan, but now we need to actually back up and rename the previous UIM directory. We'll also remove any customized probes in your probe archive, but leave the infrastructure probes. After the installations and upgrades are complete, especially those for UMP and Unified Reporter, we'll selectively move those customized probes back into the archive. At this time, we'll also need to back up the UIM database. An often overlooked piece of a safe and successful upgrade is anticipating problems and being able to react if they occur. So good planning also includes a recovery plan. From this, we'll know how long the upgrade should take. 
but if the upgrade takes longer than expected, what do we do? Keep moving forward or roll back and take another look at what might have gone wrong? We want to be able to adapt to problems. If you have a complex environment, that is part of your value as a CA customer, and this oftentimes differentiates you from your competitors. Are you ready to learn more about the next step? From here you can click on step 3 to learn more about deployment.